Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we will be discussing about the third problem of today's weekly contest. Find closest node to given two nodes. The problem states that you are given a directed graph of n nodes from 0 to n minus 1 and each node has at max one outgoing edge. Now you need to return the index of the node which have the like distance between node 1 and that node and distance between node 2 and that node if you take the maximum of those two distance that should be minimum so for example here in this graph node 1 is 0 node 2 is 1 now what you will do you will find out the distance uh, to each node let's say from 0 to 2 the distance is uh, x1 and from 0 to uh, from 1 to 2 the distance is x2 so the value at 2 is maximum of x1 and x2. Similarly, you will find the value at 3, which is the maximum of 0 to 3 and 1 to 3. And finally, you have to return the one, like the index of the one which have the minimum value. So you find out the value for each one of them and then return the one which have the minimum value. And now in case of tie, uh, you have to return the node with the smallest index. So hope the problem statement is clear. So in this particular case, the answer would be 2 because the distance from 0 to 2 is 1, distance from 1 to 2 is 1, the maximum is 1 and that is the minimum possible value. If you can see, if you find the value at 3, it will be 2, which is greater than 1. So hence the answer in this case is 2. So hope this so, uh, problem statement is clear. Now let's try to see how we solve this. So again, it's very simple. You are given two nodes and you have to find the value at each of these nodes, right? So what you can do, you can apply Dijkstra from each node and just find out the value of every node, uh, like uh, the distance between, smallest distance between this node and every other node, right? So you can apply, you can start from one, apply, find the distance, smallest distance to three, zero, two, and four. Similarly, you run another Dijkstra, you start with zero, find the distance between 0, 3, 2, and 4. And finally, for each node, you can just, uh, let's say the distance between one node 1 and 2 is n12, and node 2 and 2 is n22. You can just simply take the maximum, find the value at each node. Let's say you find the value at each node and return the node with the minimum value. So that's how you will solve this. Now, the complexity if you apply Dijkstra would be order of e log v, right? Where e is the number of edges and v is the number of vertices. But we can do this, like we can uh, do something better here. Why? Because of this statement, each node has at max one outgoing edge. Because of this, we can reduce the complexity from e log v to order of e. And that would be interesting to see that the Dijkstra Solution is something that is straightforward and you have seen that in many other pro uh, problems as well. So let's not discuss, like, let's not discuss the code of the Dijkstra solution. Instead, let's discuss this optimization because of this statement and look at the code of that particular optimization. So let's start there. So first of all, you see that uh, uh, what you need, you need to find out the distance between this node and every other node that is true you can't do anything else because you have to find out you have to find the node which have the minimum minimum like the maximum of the distance is minimized you have to find that particular node so you can't skip that part so you have to actually count like you have to find the distance from this n1 to every other node and distance from n2 to every other node it's just that applying the extra to find that would be order e log v and we will do something that will reduce it to order of v and after finding the distance everything is similar like you will just iterate over every vertices find the value and return the one with the minimum value so only thing that is uh, different here is uh, this optimization so let's look at uh, how to make this optimization so first thing is uh, uh, view start with uh, like the every node has at most one, one outgoing edge right what does it mean it actually mean that there is only one path between any two node so this this 
statement in turn mean that there is only one path between any two nodes. How it is true? You know that there is a one outgoing edge from here. So if you apply a DFS or any other thing, if you start traversing from one, you will actually uh, like end up in a path. You you actually either end up like basically everything that you start from here there is only single path from here so from one you will start you will go to three from three you will go to two from two you will go to four like because every node has only one outgoing edge at max one outgoing edge so either you will hit a dead end like this or you will traverse in a single path now because there is a single path right so let's say this is the path and let's just assume that this is n1 okay so if this is n1 and this is the path you know that there is only one way to reach here because from n1 like if there is another way then n1 should have another edge to some some to some node and that would that node would reach here but because n1 doesn't have any other edge there is only one path that goes out from n1 so there is like it will traverse in a single path like the same is true for this node and same is true for this node so it will traverse in a single path and that would be the distance from n1 to that particular node so you will just find this path and because there is a single path you know that the distance between them is just simply linearly increasing so distance between this and this is 1 then 2 then 3 and then 4 and so on and so forth now you might say that okay if there is a cycle what happens if there is a cycle if even if there is a cycle the distance like the, that you can just ignore that cycle and that uh, that should be fine why just look at it there is a cycle here 1 3 2 4 and 1 so the distance between 4 and 1 would be 1 right uh, like in this case the distance between 4 and 1 would be 1 but what we need to find is you have to start from here and go to 4 so from from here to 4 there is still one one path only that path length is 4 not 1 so that's where that's where this statement actually simplifies this entire thing and says that there is at least we can say that there is at least one path between at max one path between any two nodes and because of this you can simply apply a dfs starting from n1 and visit every possible nodes and that should be it so dfs would take ordinary time and that's how we reduce e log v to order e so just let's just uh, look at one last example so you start with n1 you encountered like you go to 3 you mark the distance between n1 and 3 as 1 now you go to 2 you mark the distance between n1 and 2 as 2 you go to 3, 4 you mark the distance between n1 and 4 as 3 and finally you hit at n1 so that's a dead end so that's how this entire uh, like you, you find out the the distance between one and one and every other node. So if the other nodes that are not visited in this uh, iteration will never be visited. So that you can see zero, like you can't reach zero from one. So every other node would have like infinite distance. So that's how you reduce the cost of finding the distance between n one and every other node from e log v to order e because of this statement. So after finding the distance from n1, you will do the same thing for n2. And finally, just uh, uh, find the value at each node by taking the maximum and return the node with the minimum value. So let's just quickly look at the code, how to do that. So what we have done, like we have initialized the graph here. Now we have, uh, like after initializing the graph, we have, find, we have to find the distance between n1 and every other node and we have to find the distance between n2 and every other node so we what we do we just do dfs from node 1 and then do another dfs from node 2 and after we will look at the dfs function but after this dfs is done what we are doing we are just uh, iterating over every node and uh, seeing if they are unreachable and if they are unreachable just uh, uh, continue because if there is a node if you can't reach j from n1 or you can't reach j from n2 you like you, you can think of the distance as infinite so that is 
uh, equal to having no distance, uh, no path. So if any of them is unreachable, you just continue. Otherwise, you find the maximum distance that is the value at the current node. And if maximum distance is less than the current known distance, you update it with the index and finally return this index. Now, what is DFS? DFS is very simple. Uh, we are just uh, take, we have taken a visited array and if visited, we encountered a visited, we just return from here. Otherwise, we visit it and update the distance as depth. So depth is initially zero and every time we are visiting any children, we are incrementing a depth. Uh, so again, this for loop is not required because there is at max one children, but just for simplicity, I have kept that as for loop. Um, again, notice that if there are more than one children, you can't apply this exact algorithm because in that case, let's say uh, three has one more child that goes to one, that goes straight to one, or let's say three has one more child that goes straight to four. So in that case, the decision between one and four would be two, not three. So because this is not, this case is not there. We have only one edge from any node. We are able to apply this and reduce the time, reduce the time complexity from E log V to order E. So hope you got the solution. If you have any doubts in this problem, please post them in the comment section below and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.